Welcome back then. We will resume racing then with a slightly earlier start than anticipated because things were going so smoothly this morning. Let's make up for the, lost, for the time before any is lost. It's the RAC Woodcut and Sterling Moss Trophy races, two combined together. Uh, and if you have one of the digital programmes, the page you ought to be looking at is page four. Uh, and what we'll do, uh, we'll quickly run through the start drivers so you know who's going to be in the cars. We've got the list. Marcus has done some beavering and he's come up with them. Uh, so going in the order that they appear in the programme, which isn't necessarily numerical order, the car's coming out onto the track now. Uh, car uh, 57 is Ben Adams going first. Car 99 is Richard McAlpine. Car 45, Mark Cole on his own. Not with Stuart Clark. Missing the ones who are soloists anyway. 21, Richard Bradley goes first, which will be worth watching. 26, Bernardo Hartogs goes first. Number two is Richard Hudson first. 41, Mark Donner is on his own, although he shared with Andrew Smith in the race we've just seen. It's going to be Mark on his own this time. Uh, 77 is Tarek Mahmoud. 82 is Rob Smith. 116 is withdrawn. 39, Robbie Bernberg goes first. 81, John Clark goes first. Three, we understand, will be driven by Josh Ward, not Thomas Ward. 16, John Yor goes first. Number 10 is running actually as number 101, Christian Festdorf. 53, Hannah Reed goes first. 20, Jonathan Abacassis is a non starter. 76, Nicholas Harris. Nick Harris goes first. Number 100, Mike Thorne goes first. 450, Paul Mortimer goes first. 24 is not Josh Ward on his own. It's Steve Ward first and then Josh. 68, Mark Gordon. 84, Joe Wilmot. 111 is Nick Crudson. 5.45 is not the time it is, it's Gregor Fiskin. Explain about the numbering of that car. I did this morning, we can talk about it later on. Uh, number four, Chris Ball goes first. Number nine, Ben Eastick starts. Number 11, Mike Grant Peterkin goes first. And number 144, George Potchkiel. Now, this is going to be a rolling start for this race, so the cars won't stop on the grid. They'll be uh, led round on this lap as they are being now. Uh, the pace car will peel off into the pit lane as it approaches Club Corner, uh, and then the race will get underway. So the grid positions on the front row, we've got on pole position the uh, number 82 car, Rob Smith at the wheel. Chris Ward would have put it there in qualifying this morning. And with him on the front row, the winner of the earlier race, Gary Pearson. So we've got Ward and Pearson, Marcus on the front row again. Absolutely. And this morning I was standing down on the balcony of the wing as um, as Chris Ward was thundering past in the uh, uh, in his lister or in Steve Osborne's lister as it is, and uh, it was fantastic with the noise of that straight six Jaguar engine reverberating uh, off the wing building, and uh, conditions were really treacherous, but uh, it was fantastic to see and uh, a great time. He rung out of the car 2:46 in the circumstances just to pip Gary Pearson by half a second. You saw how close they were in the Jaguar race earlier on uh, and the last yeah. stages of this one. Um, hopefully there's more of the same to come. But Richard Bradley in the Lotus 15 on the second row is going to be worth watching, isn't he? Because Richard is a quick modern driver. He, he was on the podium last weekend in Portimao in the last round of the European Le Mans series. Uh, he's a very quick young driver. Yes, and he was quickest lot of the session. This is the car, it's ex Graham Hill David Piper car. Uh, with long, long history, and it's owned by Michael Birch, and uh, he's a real factor in this race at the start. So he's on the second row, oh, and with him alongside him is number 45, which is this lovely little Lotus 11 and Mark Cole. Oh, yes, the, the, the dinky toy, a corgi toy. Yeah. Um, and uh, <laughs> it looks just like the, uh, the model of the period. That's how they, they liveried it. And Mark Cole, ex um, Porsche champion and uh, very rapid driver in this car, which doesn't belong to him, it belongs to its preparer and uh, they uh, they have a lot of fun with it. And the next row is quick, quickly as the race is about to get underway. We've got number 11, which is Mike Grant Peterkin going first in the Cooper Jaguar, the T38 Cooper. Yes, the Keep Endeavour car. And alongside him is 545. The H, it's not Jaguar HWM, it's an HWM Jaguar. Uh, Gregor Fiskin goes first. Marty Strenton will take it over. That's the car that was driven by John Heath in which he sadly lost his life in the millimetre back in 1956. So the race is about to get underway. What a great sight this makes, Marcus. The two listed Jaguars running side by side.
followed by the two little Lotus cars, the 15 and the 11, as they power their way, these great 50 sports cars. This race is essentially the Woodcut Trophy for cars built before 1956. Yeah, that's right, and the pre-61 Sterling Moss cars, and it's a really topsy-turvy grid because qualifying yeah. was so treacherous. Coming up towards Abbey, and it's... Uh, look at that, the two lifters, yeah. and it's Rob Smith just clinging to the inside line, going through there around the outside. See, the 545 uh, yeah. going really well in the battle already. I think that's with the Cooper Jaguar alongside, but it's Gary Pearson who leads from Rob Smith, and down the inside, out, locked up, and going straight off wide off the track. Hello. Uh, all over the grass <laughs> is Richard Bradley. <laughs> anyway, he recovered that moment quite well. But it, it, these, this is a, a, not just a, a spectacle, it's a sound as well. It really does sound gorgeous, these cars. Lots of the detail. Uh, the, oh, it's a spin by Aspenistic, isn't it? I think I'm right in saying. He uh, had the spin, or am I blaming the wrong, wrong T-type driver? 144 it is. 144, sorry. So it's not Benistic. It's uh, is it the Pochiol car. George Pochiol. So spinning is part of the family e uh, D-type. The cars all uh, now uh, making their way through Lu up uh, out of Brooklyn through Luffield, and there's the HWM Jaguar, number 545, number it had when it ran in the middle media, because that was the time of the day when it started in the race. Here we go then down past the Heritage Pits with uh, just in front. Uh, number 82 with Rob Smith at the wheel. Yeah, it's amazing. This one's super, isn't it? Uh, Smith and Pearson in those uh, very similar looking uh, Lister Nobblies. And then Richard Bradley tweaking the Lotus into the complex. And he tries to go around the outside of Pearson, but he squeezes onto the apex of the next element. He does. And he's through the middle of this fighting. You can see all that green tank tape. Uh, all down the yeah. side of the carts where Gareth Burnett uh, was uh, was attacked uh, at Estoril recently. Oh, OK, right. Well, the Jaguar power, of course, enables the Lister to get back ahead of the Little Lotus as they come down Hanger Strait into Stowe Corner. So Rob Smith leading, Gary Pearson second, biding his time, no doubt, and then the, the, the tank-taped Lotus 15 in third place. In what is a pretty close uh, representation of Team Lotus Green of the period, I think. Anyway, through the left-handed part of club into the right-handed part, coming up to the end of the first lap, it's the two Listers and the Lotus together. You wouldn't expect the little Lotus 11 to stay the pace. Oh, it's so not on Lotus the drive 15, track. So it's so got Lotus 15. Yeah. Sorry, I was talking about the other Lotus 11. Yeah, this one's yeah, there, this one right is a 15. Here. Yeah, is absolutely up there with it. Uh, so the first three bunched together in fourth place. We have uh, Mike Grant Peterkin in the Cooper Jaguar. Yeah, it's always a competitive car, this, the T38 Cooper Jag, owned by Fred Wakeman. 41, and there's a, there's a list of Costin and a list of Nobley and yeah. Mark Cole hanging <laughs> in there in Lotus 11. <laughs> so, it's, uh, yeah, the trick for Richard Bradley, and obviously he knows this, is, is to make sure he leads across the line, but he won't be in the car at the finish because of course they make the pit stop the the pit stop rule is the same as it was for the earlier race in fact it's uh the window is between 20 and 40 minutes with a, a, a minimum period stationary of 60 seconds so it's the same as in the jaguar race earlier so it's lister lotus lister at the moment as they go through brooklyn's and up to luffield it's still just number 82 the rob smith car just ahead of richard bradley there back to the shot of the pack being sort of ushered along by the big Curtis 500S Corvette engine car uh, just behind. Back with the a, a similar sort of battle we've got here. We've got the Lister, uh, and it's a Lola, not the Lotus, but the little Lola Mark 1 giving the Lister a hard yeah, time. The Ben and Adams car, isn't it? The car that won the very last race at Goodwood in 1966. Oh, Dickie Metcalf. Yeah, car. Dickie Lestrange Metcalf. Yeah. So there's the, uh, the Cooper Jaguar. And back because Bradley's got the lead. He's got the lead in the Lotus coming down into Beckett's through Maggot's corner. He made a real run for it, dived out, and uh, he's going to get eaten in the straight. No, line I was just going to say that. Straight, isn't he? He'll get on the hanger straight, and he's going to lose the lead again by the time he gets to so But uh, he'll do what he can to open up the gap through Beckett's chapel curve then and on to hang a straight and it's the lotus leading the two listers then very reminiscent of what it was like because i was there in the 1950s watching this sort of racing and here comes uh, gary pearson up the inside 
but not quite making it or not forcing the issue. So for the moment, tucking in behind Rob Smith. His uh, his list seems to have a smaller um, frontal area, doesn't it, than the one in front of it? Hmm. Yeah, maybe it has slightly, yes. It's got slightly lower rear wings, isn't it? That's what does it. And anyway, Richard Bradley then tweaks the Lotus through club corner. This is absolutely super to see. Um, Climax four-cylinder uh, engine. Look at this great battle with the Mike Thorne Healy. Another Healy in behind him. I think that's... Uh, to get the number on it. And there's the number two, uh, the, the white uh, lister but, uh, with uh, Richard Hudson at the wheel. Yeah, 98, that is the uh, Healy's. That's Nick Matthews in behind. Then we've got, uh, yes, Lister's D-type Jag in there as well. Uh, but the Healy's really having a good tussle. The closed car of Mike Thorne, the uh, Bristolian, and uh, behind him, the red car of Nick Matthews, the open car coming through. There's a nice collection of Austin Healy 100s in this race. The uh, Mike Thorne car 100M, which was the slightly modified for racing purposes, Healy 100 of the day. And it's uh, just ahead in that little battle at the moment. Uh, the uh, number nine D-type Jaguar, Ben Eastick, not the one that spun, he didn't. But uh, the D-type holding off the number 26, uh, Lotus 15 of Bernardo Hartogs. Uh, the Lotus 15s, very competitive cars, both in period against the Listers. The Aston Martin, we don't have an Aston Martin in this race, all too valuable, I think, probably, to go racing these days. Yeah, we see sometimes we see DB3s running, we've seen them recently yeah, a couple that, of times. Yeah, that's the most, yes. So the Heel is running side by side into Brooklands and not quite. Mike Thorne, I think, has just managed to hold on in front. But uh, absolutely up there with him is the number 98 car, Nick Matthews, the red car. All right, back with the leaders, Marcus. Yeah, it's fantastic, isn't it? These, um, these 3.8 litre uh, Jaguar powered listers charging through. Um, and the Healy's still at it. There's three Healy's together here. And uh, all that power behind them. But uh, they're holding sway at the moment. And down into Stowe Corner, Gary Pearson manages to uh, sneak through. Goes round the outside of Rob Smith. Yeah. Rob Smith trying to come back underneath him, though, coming out of the corner. Here's the Thorne and Matthews tussle in the Healy 100s. That lovely shell-shaped... Uh, radiator grill. grill, yes, yes. Very, very pretty. D types running together just a little bit back from those two. We saw them coming into. There's the Heelys, and then pause, and we'll get the D types. Oh, oh and that's 26. <laughs> that's having a big, big. That's moment. Hartogs. Bernardo, Bernardo Hartogs. Hartogs. Yes. Brazilian driver based in the UK. But it was the D types. Here we are. Got the D types now running together. Great sight they make, don't they? And you can see where the E-type came from. So Hartogs gets going again. And we've got a Lister, a D-type, uh, and I think we've got another Lister behind that D-type. So the Healy is now side by Mike Thorne, just about hanging on the head of Nick Matthews there as they turn into club corner. They are running second and third, respectively, in class in the uh, Woodcut Trophy Class 3A, which is headed by the number 76 car, which was uh, is uh, started by uh, Nick Harris. Yeah, Harris is just ahead of those yeah. other two Healy's we saw. Down oh. into Brooklands, Ben Adams in the Lola Mark 1. Car that's been rebuilt by uh, Nick Finberg's team. Um, oh, Classic Auto since had a big shunt at the Donington race at the start of the season. Banana the chassis. Very pretty car. Uh, it, it's, it's sensible, but it doesn't help the car's lines to have that great big rollover uh, hoop mm. behind the driver. Because uh, the Lola Mark 1, a very pretty car. And they made about 30 of them, didn't they? Uh, really successful little cars. Beautiful yes. handling. Yeah. That really established yeah. the Lola Mark. There's the uh, number 41. Lister Costin of uh, Mark Donner. And back with the Healy's. 
having a great scrap, even if the class leader is uh, a few seconds up the road. Yeah, they're having a whale of a time, aren't they? Faster slap is deadly. Last time around set by Richard Bradley, two minutes 33.470. As he builds on his lead now, last time around he was leading by 1.7 seconds, which is not a lot, it's but it's... 12 and a half seconds quicker than the pole time this morning <laughs> in uh, damp conditions. Yeah. Uh, conditions vastly better now. The, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, Curtis <laughs> coming along. Curtis Chevrolet, uh, made by uh, Frank Curtis in the States. A big silver shark about to gobble up the cars ahead of it. He's just got all those teeth in the front. Oh, yeah, and that's right. uh, in has come Gary Pearson. Yeah. And that's before the, uh, before the pit window. Yeah, well before the window. It's a problem with the car. And he's Step alighted. forward, Lewis. Find out or solve the problem. Well, Gary, Gary Pearson has uh, climbed out. His pit crew are groveling around underneath the back end of the car. But Gary's taking his gloves and now his helmet off. And our man Beals is down there to ask the questions. Is that, Lex, is that Lex Beals? <laughs> <laughs> Meanwhile, up in the lead, Richard Bradley. Share about the uh, the damage. It's good that it's been repaired. The car's out there, but uh, it's, a, it's a great looking little car. This Lotus 15 ran with a 1500cc, two litre and two and a half litre engines. Graham Hill used to race one for the for Team Lotus, the factory team. So on his own now in second place uh, is Rob Smith. The lead car actually is a Graham Hill car. It was the Graham Hill Works car for a, a season. Yes. And, then, uh, and then David Piper had it. Uh, Dorchester they... service station. Indeed. Robert Bodle. Uh, there's That's Sam uh, Tordoff. Uh, Tordoff, isn't it? Yeah, just behind the, in, in the Porsche. With that little green bib around the front. Hill With Hill a JCT reg no, registration number, it's I see. It's like a frog, isn't it? <laughs> With that green front and the, yeah. and the big eyes. And Gary Pearson um, had a win this morning, but um, out of luck this time round. Yeah. There's the uh, Mercedes, the car of Christian Prestorf, number 101. Uh, actually running... Oh, it, uh, I see it's now called number 10, so it's gone back to being number 10 as per programme on the timers, timing screen, uh, and is running in 16th... Uh, no, sorry, not 16th, in 21st place. What about the Hartogs 15, Marcus? What's the history of that one? I'm not actually sure. It's a car that um, he's had for uh, a year or so. We've got a belching of flame out of the Mercedes, just yeah. uh, distracting uh, uh, our attention there. But um, he's um, he's been running in a Grand Prix Lotus. He's a sports car Lotus, a GT40, um, uh, Alpha GTA as well. He's got plenty of got cars. Got a few cars, stable. yes. <laughs> mm. And a delightful guy. So Richard Hudson then in the white is the Jaguar there. And oh, uh, sorry, that's it's the Chevrolet, isn't it? It's the Chevy, yeah. Yeah. 144, which is uh, the Pochol number, D-type, charging past one of the uh, listers. So the D-type, very wide through club, but that's OK. And we are just about a quarter of the way through the race. There's the Cooper Bristol, the ex-Tony Crook car. is always driven. It's uh, John Yore at the wheel of the car at the moment. The uh, Cooper Bristol. Yeah, it's owned by Peter Mann. It's a, it's a Type 24-25, so it's like the two-litre Grand Prix cars that yeah. raced in 1952 and 53, isn't it? But with a slightly offset driving position in those cycle wings. Tony Crook, who um, who ran uh, Bristol. Bristol Great cars. Oh, and the uh, 545 is out of the race for looks things as well, and that's the HWM Jaguar of Gregor Fiskin, unfortunately. 
Martin Stretton was due to drive later. Had brake issues in qualifying this morning. Back with the Healy, but we've got the Cooper Bristol just ahead of it. John Yaw just ahead of the Austin Healy. Had a very big accident at Monaco Historics with that car, not his fault, a few years ago. And it's been uh, restored to a better condition. It's more pristine than perhaps it was when Tony Crook raced it. It's a very much a working and very successful car. One one seven. That's Ian Dalgleish with the Lotus 17, the successor to the 11, really. But it wasn't as successful. It had to compete against the the, the Lola Mark ones. The late Keith Green was probably the most successful driver of Lotus 17. Well, the but the engineering car. Yeah, but it, it, it wasn't a no, match it, for the Lolas, really. But. It had Bizarre suspension had the Chapman strut mm. suspension didn't it just didn't really work on that car so they put no. them back to kind of Lotus 11 style front suspension on some of them. Well, that was out of period. Anyway, the the battle continues <laughs> between Thorne and Matthews. Mike Thorne still ahead of Nick Matthews, but uh, oops, it's like wobble on the curb there by Matthews in the open car. Now they're going to be side by side as they come through hangar through. Uh, Chapel Kerbal to hang us straight. Who's going to get into Stowe first? It should, it should test your powers of aerodynamics, shouldn't it? And uh, Matthews comes down. He's got it. He's moved ahead in the uh, the open car with its indicator blinking. Right. Well, I think that's the first time we've seen him ahead, properly ahead. Can he hang on to that? Ready to hand over to his wife, Sarah. You know, he's actually pulling away from Mike Thorne a little bit now. So just to run down the order, in the lead is the number 21, Lotus 15, Richard Bradley. Second is 82, Rob Smith in the Lister. Third is Mark Cole in the lo little Lotus 11, which we have the, the, the Corgi toy that we haven't seen that much of. Uh, some of you will remember having a Corgi toy, Lotus 11, probably. Marcus probably had one. I, I used to. Yeah. <laughs> not, in, not in pristine condition. If no, I would uh, imagine not. It was well raced. Exactly, Ren. Yeah. So, uh, in fourth place is Mike Grant Peterkin uh, in the uh, number 11, the Cooper Jaguar T38. In fifth place is 57, uh, which is the Ben Adams at the moment, Lola Mark 1. Uh, in sixth place, Peter Ratcliffe, with the number 170 Lister Jaguar. In seventh place, number 41, is the costed Lister of uh, Mark Donner, Jaguar engine one. Uh, and in eighth place is 99, the Curtis Chevrolet, Chris K uh, Richard McAlpine at the moment. And tenth uh, is number 144, the T-type that's one of the hands of George Pochkiel. The new fastest lap. That's the uh, the Turner Arden, isn't it? Um, which is oh, <laughs> and that's a 450 going round. At Paul Mortimer. Yeah, Paul Mortimer. Touch from the, I suspect from the Turner Arden there. That that's a, is that unique, the Turner Arden? It probably is, isn't it? You would think so. Um, it raced at Goodwood, I think, once in period, and um, it was back at Thruxton this year. Didn't last very long. Right. But it's great to see these cars coming out of the woodwork. So number 99 then, Richard McAlpine, the Curtis says, the another of the list of Jaguars. Uh, number 170, one of the Noblies. This is uh, Peter Ratcliffe's car. Last time around, Richard Bradley set the new fastest lap at 231.306. So. That's 15 seconds quicker. And that, was while lapping, right. that was while lapping the Heelys. Let's as go well, to Lewis. The lap. Lewis has somebody with him. Well, here we are down in the pits with Gregor Fiskin. Gregor, sadly, you had to bring the 545 Jaguar 
HWM in. What was the problem? Um, a really strange thing. They're on the steering wheel, uh, the left spoke actually sheared. I mean, when you're driving these cars, you're giving them a lot of steering input. And I just noticed the steering went a bit wobbly in my hand. And it's got th it's got a three-spoke steering wheel, and uh, one of the third spokes is broken. So it just wasn't safe to carry on, unfortunately. Well, obviously, it's not safe, and uh, a real shame to see because the car is such a very well prepared and presented. It's a beautiful car. Well, thank you. I mean, 545 is its Millie Millie start number from 1956. And I'm just thinking Mike Hawthorne used to like a four spoke steering wheel. So it's a shame Mike Hawthorne hadn't driven it in period because we, we would have been carrying on today. Yeah, if I might, if I might, we'll just have a little look. There we go. There we go, we can see the, uh, the, the offending oil. Anyway, sad to say, but at least you're okay and the car's okay. Yeah, okay, we'll live to find another day and it's a great race and wonderful to be at Silverson. Thank you very much, Gregor. Thank you. Back to you in the studio. Uh, thanks, Lewis. Yes, uh, just uh, wondering whether he would uh, want to fit a four-spoke steering wheel to... Uh, if, is that the original wheel? I don't suppose so. Want to make a new one in unobtainium. <laughs> sort it out. That's right, yeah. All right, there's the Lola on the screen, so uh, coming down. Yeah, it's a fabulous little car, and uh, so it's been beautifully put together since it's shunned at Donington earlier in the year, and it's going really nicely into the pits, and uh, Nick Finberg, who's prepared it, will take it over. From, uh, Are we in the window? Yes, we should be. Yes, we are just. Yeah, going, just, yeah. yeah. Meanwhile, Richard Bradley is just uh, going quicker and quicker and quicker. Uh, built up a lead of eight seconds now, 8.16 seconds. Uh, his last lap was a 2.30.247. On the basis that Michael Birch won't be as quick as Richard. That car is by no means a certain winner yet. The, uh, the white Lister, the Lister Chevrolet. that which is uh, running in 21st place pursued by the gullwing mercedes yeah, that's first off isn't it with that superb um, Camera, uh, carrera panamericana livery is, is it a genuine carrera panamericana car i'm not sure but i wouldn't be surprised if it hasn't done some uh, of the reruns of it recently. well though yeah it has to be a rerun car because th there wasn't one in 1955 the last no career proper was 1954 so it's too new to have it's been still actually the, in the, in the flamethrowers flame uh, working overtime coming out of the sills chased by uh, robbie bernberg in the little camtail cooper the um, cooper type 39 Oh, in the 98, Healy's been thrown inside the Jaguar. The Jaguar d has got more torque and uh, is able to uh, snort back ahead. That's Nick Matthews, who was playing with Mike Thorne earlier on. He's got, he vanquished him, now he's going to conquer an e a D-type. And that's the Benny Stick, uh, Carl Jones car. Yeah, yeah Benny Stick at the, in it at the moment. 80. And, and that is um, uh, Gordy Much getting into the little Cooper. Yes, Gordy Much, for those who perhaps don't follow more modern racing, has been a bit of a star in the Ginetta GT5 series over the last few years. Regular winner in that. Comes from Dunblane in Scotland. John Clark is the benefit, the uh, almost sugar daddy for a lot of uh, Scottish racing drivers. He helps them out in their early days. Yep, mentor and uh, guide. John Clark, the Scottish motor baron. Been racing for a very long time, oh, hasn't yeah. he? And, and all kinds of things up to the British Touring Car Championship. That's right, for BMW, in BMW. The Jaguar um, XK in the background was exploring the wet part of the track. <laughs> yes, <sir. laughs> after its tires. Yeah, uh, it the, yeah, that's the, the Mark Gordon Reed Gom car, I think it must be. Back with the the Curtis number 99, which is in seventh place. Richard McAlpine at the wheel of it. One of the cars in which you really can see the driver at work. 
I remember, you know, when um, when Don Shedd, one of our greatest oh, yes. carboat uh, yes. builders and, and drivers, yeah. had that car. And he yes. bought a period Chevrolet road car in the <laughs> States to get the right age of engine to go in it. Oh, right. He put the engine in, yeah. and um, its running was from Andover to Exeter and back twice in a day down the A303, which is marvellous. Excellent. Well, we've got two Lister Jaguars ahead of the Curtis at the moment. One of each type, a knobbly ahead of a Costin bodied car. Costin because they were the body was designed by Frank Costin. Knobbly was something was a, was a retro li label given to the knobbly cars because they looked knobbly by comparison with the Costin. And there was the Mr. Knobbly who designed it. <laughs> and uh, Sterling Moss had that wonderful term for it, described it as pugnacious. Yes, good word. Pugnacious, old boy. <laughs> <laughs> Right, we're not quite at half time yet. Uh, Richard Bradley, I suspect, running to the end of the window. This is this great battle between 170, which is Ratters, the ex uh, catering racer, Peter Ratcliffe, and uh, Mark Donnell in, the, uh, in that smoother, longer tailed, longer nosed Costin uh, car. So that the sleeker car should be quicker in a straight you line think with so? the same power. There's a half a goal wing. Yes, yes, there you are. That's what goal it, wing why it's called the goal wing. So it wasn't Tesla's idea after all. Uh, absolutely not, no. Right, these two lists are still at it. Hammer and tongs. With the Curtis just behind. Coming to the end of the 10th lap. Peter Ratcliffe in fifth place. Mark Donner sixth and Richard McAlpine in the Curtis in seventh place. Got a look at the um, uh, the Aston Martin there, the DB2. Uh, the DB2, which is Hannah Reed in her father's car. Oh, yeah, 07 MH, which was uh, the works uh, number plate. The, the, the trade plate. Yes, not, not, on, not on several of the, uh, yeah, on several yes, of the quite. cars, wasn't it? That car was, um, was owned by the Kramer family for quite a while. Oh, right. Poor old Gabriel Kramer passed away recently, and a lovely character who, uh, who raced in his youth did. In, in Africa. Um, oh, right. And then came back many, many decades later. Morgan, didn't he? Morgan and uh, Elva. Uh, did a Formula Ford race at, um, at Dijon, I recall, Goodness as well. Me. Lovely, lovely guy, much missed. Right, so there we have Ben Eastick, and up behind him, is the race leader coming up to lap him in the Lotus 15. The D-Type very much a car designed to, to succeed at Le Mans in particular. Although well, it didn't do too badly at Silverstone, but uh, Le Mans was its uh, happiest hunting ground. But the Lotus 15, very much a car that's suited to the shorter British circuits. A spin, we saw lots of it going in the right direction. Now we've got Richard Hudson spinning the Lister Chevrolet. Looks like the old uh, Mark Lewis uh, Lister Chevrolet. That, what, uh, number two? Was, yeah, the white car that white was, based, car, yeah. uh, was based locally to here for a while. Oh, and the... Where's <laughs> the uh, Curtis has got really stays wide. right. Yeah. Oh, there it is, it's come back. Yeah. <laughs> Need a lot of road in Curtis by the looks of things. And 41, the costed body car, Mark Donner. And the order doesn't really change, which isn't to say that the drivers in the second or third place of the group aren't trying hard to find a way through. Right, we've got 26, that is 15, in the pit lane. That's the one that spun earlier on. Bernardo Hartox to hand over to Chris Helliwell. Clark Kent, as he's known. Because he's super. Just reminds us of Clark Kent. <laughs> uh, he's raced um, quite a bit he has a little yeah. formula 2 cooper which he raced right. one liter yes. formula 2 cooper races with the HTPCA. and there's uh, chris ward now in the 82 car which has come in uh, at uh, 11 laps so uh, richard bradley continues uh, in that uh, xworks lotus 15 and uh, michael birch barry to his friends is uh, waiting in the wings to climb in
Well, look, I know it's slightly artificial. The, the, the lead that Richard Bradley had when he, when Chris Ward came into the, or Bob Smith came into the pits, was 17.9 seconds. But that's probably a little artificial. He was certainly heading towards 10 seconds. And there's the uh, there's Curtis. The Curtis. Chris Keane getting strapped aboard, based in uh, Hampshire. What a tool that is. I know. Sort of really kind of... Who brought it to the menacing. UK in the first place, do you know? I think it may have come in with... Um, Don with, Shed. But with Don Shed, yeah. yeah. Richard Bradley carries on. But he can by no means be assured of victory. Car number four, one of the D-types. That's the Chris Ball, Dick Ball car. Has that been in yet? No. So it'll be Chris Ball at the moment. Very much the 1954 look about that car. No rear fin. Yeah, and the short, short nose. Yeah, short nose. Sort the 3.4 era. I actually really like a short nose D-type. I think they look prettier than the long... Uh, the long Do you? Mm. All subjective. Absolutely. Yeah, so I've just, we've got a Lotus 1-2 at the moment, actually. We've got the uh, the Corgi toy in second place. <laughs> and we can go to Lewis, because he's in the pits, to talk to somebody for us. Lewis. So we're back uh, on the circuit. Lewis Beals was with uh, Rob Smith, who'd driven that opening stint uh, in the Malden Salt Lister Jag. And uh, meanwhile, two more listers here. 170, Peter Ratcliffe still under pressure from 41, Mark Donner. And they've been fighting for a, a few laps now. Uh, shows no sign of... Uh, abating this battle. So great camera shots here we're getting, aren't we? Mm. Uh, here's, here's Sam Tordoff coming down into Brooklands. Running in 17th place. Yeah, third place has come by Sorry, Rob. <laughs> Bit of a technical issue there. No, hang on, no, no, Sorry. Hang on. So, Lewis, uh, you're with Rob Smith in the pit lane. place car what are the conditions like out there looks bone dry looks absolutely beautiful out there but um it's greasy at four or five places on the circuit and i think um the start of the race that allowed the lotus just to to get a bit of a gap but the more it dries the quicker we go and uh, we're slowly reeling him in uh chris ward's in the car now and i think by the end we're going to be absolutely right on them and uh i think this race is for the taking yeah, you, so you decided about half distance to swap drivers. Was that a, a, a preordained decision? I, I think it was just uh, how quick or fast, how fast or slow I was, and um, either get me in or, or get me out. But um, no, I think everyone waits for a safety car. Everyone tries to leave it as late as they can. Um, but we normally split the driving 50-50. And um, the real professional, Chris Ward's in now. So uh, let's see how he does to the end. Yeah, because the, the, the Lotus obviously started their professional driver first. So yep. you, you're on for this, aren't you? I think we are on for this. And um, the, the three of us went into turn one absolutely side by side. And um, I took the lead for, for a lap. And uh, just can't wait to see what happens. OK, Rob, good to see you. And uh, we may see you on the podium later. Hope so. Thanks very much. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Lewis. Yeah, there's a good chance of that happening. That uh, I would have thought the odds are probably not knowing exactly how much difference in performance there'll be, but there's no doubt that Richard Bradley is the quickest, probably the, the quickest driver, one of the quickest drivers in the race. And now second and third have uh, both come in. Mark Cole in the number 45, the Corgi Toy Lotus 
uh, and 11. And uh, Carl Jones has got a problem in the number nine D type. It's not picking up on the hangar straight. He's coasting down towards Stowe Corner, hoping he can limp the car to a safe place. But it is having problems. Is that smoke coming out the back? It doesn't appear to be. Exhaust type smoke, but it can't be spray at that speed. But he's got it, he's nursed it to uh, to stow. He wants to save himself a walk. Yeah, he's pulling off. Oh, pulling quite off nice quite after, yeah. The Welshman, Carl Jones, a former champion of brands. In Formula Ford. In Formula oh, Ford. Yes. That's a, a very much race car, and it, it really has problems. Ben Eastig has had this car for a long, long time, built from original parts, but not in period. Yep. But it is a fully legal car. It doesn't pretend to be something that was built in 1955. There's uh, a view of car 100, which has probably been in now, hasn't it? Bradley then yes. in the pit. He's just completed his 14th lap. He's not getting out. No, he's not getting out. So he's going to stay in the car. They've got a chance of winning the race, so they're going to leave Richard in it by the looks of ah, things. That's interesting. So uh, Michael Birch, you're not going to see Rubens Barrichello look alike uh, Michael <laughs> Birch. Yes, he is a bit, isn't he? Yeah. yeah. Well, he's got a Barrichello helmet. And uh, here we go. The Lotus, that's uh, the 117, which is the Canadian. Yeah. In, uh, 117, yep. Yeah. Um, Ian Dalgleish, the Canadian. One of a couple of Canadians here this weekend. We've got uh, Reed Gom in uh, Jaguars. Yes, yeah, so the Lotus 70 designed by Len Terry, one of the many cars he designed. This is one of the earlier ones, one of the earliest designs. There's uh, 144. That's probably been in. That's the Potchol car. Yes, it has. In fact, hardly a car has... Uh, the the Harris Healy, number 76, has yet to stop. But otherwise, everybody has been yes, in. That's up in a remarkable seventh place. But, oh, there's a, a car off there. That is the, the Bernberg Ugo. Um, Cooper T39 that's uh, pulled off the side of the track. He's trying to get it going again. It's going. Little single cam Climax engine in the back. Centre seat sports car. All for the period. And look at that. It's a, a minute and 29, is it, between... Um, First and second. That's well, the board now, but that's of course not taking into account uh, the, the, uh, the stop. It'll narrow considerably. It but, will. But by how much is what we're waiting to find but out. With, but with Bradley staying in that uh, lead yeah. Lotus, we 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 could be in for a treat of a finish. Yes, it's going to be Richard Bradley in the Lotus 15 against Chris Ward in the Lister Jaguar. Chris Ward was um, was the bridesmaid earlier on, wasn't he? Yes. Don't want to be a bridesmaid again. Your and Wiggly, Nick Wiggly, they're very well matched pair of drivers, those two. Uh, that Cooper Bristol currently in 13th place, second in the in its class, the Woodcut Trophy class too. Is the Mark Cole 45. With matching helmet almost. With the same shade of blue, <laughs> isn't it? It is. And that Lotus 11, Mark Cole, he stayed in the car, of course. Originally he was going to be sharing it, uh, but uh, Mark Cole on his own, running in third place. Well, next time around, I think we should get a, a better impression of what the gap is between the two leading cars. There's 77. That's the 
Mahmoud Lister Jaguar. Started by Tarrant, now driven by Galal. There we go. There's our answer. It's 15 and a half seconds between first and second in reality. I think the bridesmaid is going to remain the bridesmaid. I think that's too much. We've got 20 minutes to go, though. We've still got a third of the race. Here's Mark Cole tucking in behind the... Oh, and the Turner Arden has spun. It was driven in period by Reg Croisdill. Don't remember him. Well, I, mean, I, I, I believe you, but I don't remember him. It's a VSCC <laughs> race, wasn't it? Andrew oh, Croisdill, right. I think. Anyway, it's on its way again. Yes, 15.6 seconds, the gap first to second. Uh, Mark Cole in the notice 11 is another 27 seconds adrift of the Lister. So here is the second place Lister. Chris Ward at the wheel. That Turner Arden we saw, of course, has the uh, the Ford engine with the, um, the Arden. Arden heads. Yeah. Zora Arcus Duntov. The Arden head man who yes. designed the Chevrolet Corvette. Now the track is much drier than it was when we were watching Chris earlier on in the E type on the, a slippery surface. He's not quite as spectacular. Little and large up ahead. David and Goliath. And David's going around the outside of Goliath with his little pea shooter at the party. Right, shot past uh, Chris Keane in the mighty Curtis. A little Lotus ahead of the pair of them at the moment, about to be gobbled up by certainly Chris Ward. Here comes the Curtis. Yeah, that uh, battle between the, the Curtis and the Lotus 17 is for seventh pl uh, eighth place eighth and ninth places we shouldn't lose sight of the fact that the um the woodcut trophy cars the uh, the earlier uh, original cars um uh, that section being led by patrick blakeney edwards in the cooper 238 started so well by uh, michael grant peterkin yeah um of course, they lost the uh, the HWM Jag, one of their principal rivals, uh, very early in the race when Gregor Fiskin had that steering wheel failure. Well, Chris Ward has just done the fastest lap of the race, 228.062, which contrasts with the fastest lap that Richard Bradley did earlier on. We've got a Healy slowing down, haven't we? Uh, of uh, 228.443. Uh, and the number 70, that's Nick. Nick Harris, or Oliver Harris now, driving it. That was the Healy that was absolutely flying, wasn't it? Well... It's flying no more. It's uh, not... Even. Not so much fly as plummet. Aye. <laughs> pulling off at Stowe. Right, so Chris Ward, there we are, on screen. 15.29 seconds to find in little more than 15.29 minutes. <laughs> yeah, good analogy, that. But as for what's going on behind, well, we've got the Mark Cole Lotus in third place, number 45. And uh, Richard Birch just threw oh, the Lotus around the outside of uh, it's now Peter Snowden in the uh, Aston Martin DB2 that Hannah Reid started. And they're up behind the GOM Special, which has a Aston Martin kind of tail. Yes. yes. Um, and a sort of a cheese grater grill. Uh, and uh, Jag engine, I think, under the bonnet. Down into Stowe then. Lotus has sailed past in a straight line. Yeah, Richard was, uh, his father was based as a lawyer based with one of the big firms in uh, Asia and he's, he began his racing career in the karting in the, in the Far East. Uh, then came over racing in the UK, then went to Japan. And was a 
was a front runner in the Japanese Formula 3 championship. And he shares a pre war Aston Martin with, with his father, father Edward. Edward. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That tussle between uh, Ratters and um, and the Jaguar of Mark, at least the Jaguar of Mark Donner continues, and uh, the Adams, the Adams family, cue the theme <laughs> tune. Uh, Lola <laughs> has come up behind. The Festoff's there as well in the big Merc. Yeah, he's uh, in 17th place. The Mercedes. That's. Um, now, what did I say the gap was? It was 15 odd seconds. Okay, well, it's down to 12.8. Okay. To uh, 14 and a half minutes to go. So Chris Ward is certainly showing how quick he is around Silverstone. He wants to be the blushing bride, not the bridesmaid again. Yeah, it's interesting because, of course, Bradley was slightly um, inconvenienced by some back markers. Yeah. Not slower cars, not really back markers, but. Uh, always happens around here and now it's going to be Chris Ward's turn to uh, go past the Aston Martin DB2 Mark Cole's hanging in there well in third place indeed. but um, he's um, stood a, a chunk ahead a long way ahead of uh, Pat Blakeney Edwards in the ex equipe Endeavour Cooper Jaguar Down at Stowe, meanwhile, the leader has just overtaken that Cooper, which you saw off the track a few laps ago. It's about the length of probably about the length of Hangar Straight, I would say, mm, yes. between first and second. Here's the second place driver, Chris Ward in 82, Steve Osborne's Mr. Jag. It's um, a fairly recent sanction car and uh, started by Robert Smith for the Molden Salt team. Still see how so he was going damp the track is. is so yeah it is going past the pits and on Hamilton straight it's sort of in the lee of the wind isn't it? you don't really get, really get that there's the Cooper bobtail Trying for obvious reasons how's that gap coming down here 10 point something yeah another faster slap to Chris 226.933 so we're focusing quite rightly on the t on the two leaders there he is again Chris Ward really is pushing uh, in third place, Mark Curran, the Lotus 11. In fourth place, uh, it's now Pat Blakeney Edwards. In the number 11, Cooper Jaguar. In fifth place is number 170, Peter Ratcliffe's Lister Jaguar. In sixth place, number 41, Mark Donner's Lister, Costin Lister Jaguar. In seventh place is 117, Ian Dalgleish with the Lotus 17. In eighth place, number 99, Chris Keane now in the Curtis Corvette, the Curtis 500S Corvette. In ninth place, uh, number two, which is the Lister Chevrolet, now being driven by Stuart Morley. Uh, and in tenth place, number 144, the D-Type Jaguar, now being driven by Father Potskiel Paul. That's a change for uh, Stuart Morley, isn't it, from a vintage Bentley? Uh, yes. To a Lister Chevrolet. So 10.9 seconds, 11 and a half minutes to go. It could be a Silverstone type finish. I do declare. <laughs> and uh, Bradley tweaking the Lotus. It does have quite a big steering wheel, doesn't it? Uh, in there. Where is the Lister? There it is. And you can see it's sort of dived across that yes. backdrop there. There it is. Where have all the Cooper Monaco's gone? Because normally we'd have a Cooper Monaco or two in there. It's bizarre, isn't it? Sometimes you see four or five of them. Oh, right. Um, and then you don't see any at all. Yeah. So there may well be some in Portugal this weekend. Because they'd be uh, a match for the Lotus 15, of course, as they were in period. Yes, yeah, so a couple of them, I think, um, had uh, breakages at, uh, at Goodwood recently. Right. Ooh, that was a little bit sort of uh, sideways and <laughs> reflex opposite lock from uh, Chris Hall. Doesn't think about it, just kind of... The, the tail of the car wags yeah. and is um, 
Yeah, his right arm comes rushing up, crosses over on the left one. Another new fastest lap by Chris, 2.26.792. The gap is down to less than 10 seconds now. It's 9.894. It's great to be able to see the driver working away at the wheel. In the way they caught uh, sight of just then. There's the XK120 Jaguar, number 24. Now Josh Ward at the wheel of that. The car once raced in the Curie Cost colour. Well, it's in the Curie Cost livery now. And the Turner Arden there still going really well. It now, is, isn't at, it? At, um, at Thruxton, when I first saw it, it was struggling to complete a lap. Right. So they've done a lot of work on it, clearly. And there's the. Uh, a lovely Porsche on the outside. Toured off team Porsche, JCT 600. In 21st place, it is. Jack Toured off was a great rally driver, wasn't yeah, he? Indeed. Um, Sam's. Uh, and had the uh, registration plate JCT 600, and it was then the name of the business he started. Exactly. If you drive through that part of Bradford, it's almost like. JCT 600 village because every, every dealership in the whole street are versions of JCT 600. Well, Richard Bradley has just done his personal best lap last time around, so he's uh, making sure he's not going to get caught. He's done a, it's not as quick as Chris Ward's fastest lap, but it's still an impressive time 227.886 as against Chris doing a 226.792. Just over a second in it. Making a real good move is um, is Morley in the... Uh, number two. Uh, in the number two. He's up into eighth place. He's gone past McAlpine and Keane. He's gone past the Potcholes. And uh, Gordy Much is pushing on as well in the 81. He's in 11th place ahead of the Hart Hartogs and uh, Chris Halliwell. Lotus 15. Well, if he carries on at this rate, Morley is going to catch Dalgleish in the Lotus 17, who at the moment is running 17 seconds ahead of him, but he's lapping five seconds slower than the Lotus. 20 laps down, the gap has, is down. Another fastest lap, Ian. 226.413, so it's about a second a lap. Are we going to get eight more laps in? 8.127 is the gap. It's that analogy I made with the with the time of remaining and the lap time it continues because it's 7.2928 minutes remain. Yep, it's about three laps worth of uh, yeah. time. So at this rate, it probably won't quite happen. No. But uh, nonetheless, it won't be through lack of trying. And traffic could always play a part. Traffic could always play a part one way or another. So 8.1 seconds, first to second. Richard Bradley. Of course, posterity is going to have the results showing Birch and Bradley, but... Yep. It has definitely only been Richard Bradley driving. We saw him sit in the, in yeah. the car in the pit stop, so, uh, you know, that's true. And, of course, Michael Birch is out in the, um, in the GT40 race uh, yes. later. Uh, Mark Cole has just done his personal best lap in the Lotus 11 in third place at 230.719, uh, which is pretty impressive stuff. And I know it's got a 1500 engine. It's not. It would have been originally an 1100 engine, wouldn't it, in that car? Well, there are lots of different engines. They ran 750s at uh, the Mans. Yeah. yeah. To to beat the um, to beat the blue cars. Well, the French wouldn't want to do a thing like that, would they? Well, when there was a lot of money available for the index of performance, you would. In index of thermal efficiency was another that one, was, wasn't that, it? That was another one that came yeah. along, yes. Yeah. Wicked Trophy still led by um, Blake Nearwoods in that Cooper Jaguar. And I think he's got that secure. Because he has. The, the next Wicked Trophy car... It's Clark and Much, isn't it? Is, is Gordy Much, yeah. yeah, in John Clark's Cooper. Yep. In 10th place. And then the Potchol D-Type, I think. So they've just gone through past the little um, Fraser Nash Le Mans rep, and the leader's up behind them as well. This is getting busy up into uh, into Abbey. Oh, has the leader been seen? Sure and another new fastest lap for Chris Ward, 225.578, and the gap is 6.2 seconds. It now looks as though it could be on again. We've got 
Five and a half minutes just under to go. Richard Bradley in the thick of traffic. Of course, traffic that will also have to be negotiated. But there's Chris Ward. So the time's come down to what you said, 220? 220.578 is the new fastest lap by Chris Ward. The gap, 6.2 seconds. That's really impressive. What a great drive this is. Five minutes to go. The, the race ends, of course, the first time the leader crosses the line after the 60 minutes. Oh, and there in the background is yes. Chris Ward. Richard Bradley looking totally cool and calm and collected behind the wheel of the Lotus as he turns through Luffield. Here he is then onto the Heritage Pit straight, and at the back of that group is Chris Ward. Now they get to the end of this lap in a minute and a half. Four minutes. There's time for certainly two uh, more. Laps. Two more laps in this yeah. race, yeah. Um, After this one, yeah. It looks it has very good poise, doesn't it? The Lotus 15. Yes. Well balanced, beautifully driven helps yes it's a very di a considerable contrast with what he was driving last week yeah and this car, was, this car was racing at Estoril a couple of weekends right. ago doing really well Ooh, oh and uh, yeah he's, uh, he's got that's Ratcliffe popping out of the slipstream of one of the uh, Heelys but Chris is going to outbreak him going into Stowe Corner he's he gets clear through side to the leader isn't he yes Unless the leaders found somebody else to lap. It hasn't quite. I think it's the the uh, the um, Keith Darden that it may be lurking up the road ahead of the leaders. Right, we're going to get another lap time here. Well, Chris Ward's had to negotiate traffic on that lap. And neither of them improved on that time on that lap. The gap is down though, 4.2 seconds. 4.2 seconds. We reckon there's two laps in the race. Well, Rob Smith's it, prophecy it, was um, was bang on the money, wasn't it? A Silverstone type finish yep. is, uh, is definitely on the cards here. Even the sun's come out to have a look. Look there at uh, Nick Finberg in the uh, little Lola, yeah. Mark One. There's the Cooper Crystal. There are the headlights on the Lotus. Lots of blue flagging from the marshals. There's the Lister. Hang a straight last lap in, would you say? What? A Nigel, a Nigel Nelson, you mean? Type of thing. And very wide there. That, that was that Sue yeah. Luffield. High, wide, and handsome into Luffield, but um, that was to possibly to just make a um, a line round the slower car that yes, was there. Yes, could be. Yeah, so this it was the Cooper Bristol, wasn't yeah. it? And that's uh, Nick Wigley, Nick Wigley now of, yeah. uh, of classic Silverstone fame. Through Cops Corner. And we know that the, the, the Jaguar engine in the list has got, it's got the power to overtake down, as you suggested, Marcus, Hanger straight. But he's not got there, not caught it yet. Right, through Chapel Curve onto Hanger straight. It's going down and down, the, certainly that gap, considering what it was when we started talking about it, it is drastically reduced. It's about a third of the length of the straight now, if that. And uh, Richard Bradley can see that red helmeted figure of Chris Ward in his mirrors as the 82, this the Jag. There's one more lap. Nice round uh, Stowe. There's less than a lap time left on the clock, so they'll be starting their last lap in just a moment. And he's going to want every slower car between him and uh, his pursuer, Richard Bradley, there. So here's Richard, and there is Chris Ward. It's touch and go they are what a couple of seconds apart come on screen update yourself <laughs> they're a lap apart according to the tv screen that's oh. wrong so we haven't yet 
had an update of the timing screen. It's a little bit lagging, a little bit high. Richard Rally has just done his personal best lap, I can tell you that much. At 2.26.624, it's not fa as fast as Chris Ward has gone, but for some reason, the timing system has... Well, we can see them on the, we can see see them on the cameras anyway. Where are they? We're waiting down at... Yes, here they come. And here we go. This is down into uh, Brooklyn's lock-up for, uh, for Richard Bradley. Into Luffield. Not the high wide line that time, but not as tight a line as the lead, as uh, his pursuer took. A little uh, slide. One, yeah, it was 1.7 seconds and Chris Ward did another new fastest lap. It's come up at the screen at last. A 2.24. 224.107. When we started monitoring this, he was in the 226s, wasn't he? Was, he? he was, he uh, was, absolutely. And he's now in the very low 24s. He led, uh, Richard Bradley led onto the lap by 1.7 it's, it's seconds. all about the gap that Bradley can take out. And it's, Bradley's broken. Bradley's broken. His and hands up out of the cockpit. The lead car is off. And, uh, well... It's going to be left to uh, Chris Ward to uh, rub molten, rub molten salt into the wound. He's keeping going. So Richard Bradley, as Marcus said, had his hand high in the air to show there was a problem. Uh, he's cruising. So whatever the problem is, it's prevented him from holding out right to the end. And so Chris Ward comes down into the final few corners a secure leader and he can ease off but it was a, a very very impressive drive by both of them into and through club corner and up to the checkered flag so the flag waved at Chris Ward who with Rob Smith wins the MRL RAC oh, Woodcut Trophy. Lotus oh. is crawling down towards Stowe. How cruel is this? Not out of fuel, is it? I wonder. Well, I was wondering whether it's out of fuel, but but. Well, he's going to lose second place, isn't he? Yeah, Mark Cole's going to grab second. A distant but uh, gallant second in the little blue and red Lotus. And no, uh, Richard Bradley's given up the ghost. The car will go no further. And uh, he's abandoning ship. Now, back in the day, people would have pushed the car to the finish, but you can't do that anymore. No. So we're waiting now then for a change. And in second place, it will be Mark Cole. And third, yes. remarkably, will be the Grant Peterkin, Blakeney Edwards, um, Cooper Jaguar yeah. T38, winner of the, uh, the Royal Automobile Club Wood Trophy section. So where is Cole? He was a long way adrift. Ratcliffe has come through, shown as fifth. Donna, sixth. Oh, and he's annoyed. He was all pumped up. And oh, there is, um, that was uh, Mark Cole popping out of the slipstream of the little Cooper and <laughs> almost getting collected by Alistair Chevrolet. Which uh, was a lap down, surely. Lap behind. So I'm yes, quite sure yeah, why yeah, it was yeah. so fraught there. Yeah, so Cole, yep. Cole is second overall. Yes. Third overall is going to be the car 11, um, Grant Peterkin and Blakeney Edwards, but with Fred Wakeman's Cooper Jag. They could classify the uh, Richard Bradley on the number of laps he, he may be quite classified in fourth because, yes. of course, Ratcliffe and Donna have had the flag. And they yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yes, I think third or fourth. Yeah, I think um, I think we'll see that Grant Peterkin and Blake Neal. Yes, they just will. About yeah, get you're right. Yeah. Well, a dramatic race. It's a shame in a way that uh, one car has to have a problem right at the end, because it would have been fascinating to see whether they would have crossed the line side by this side. This is Cooper Jaguar coming there up to are. the line now. Yeah. And uh, Pat Blake Neal Woods, third place winner of the Royal Osbiel Club. Woodcut Trophy section. It hasn't updated yet on our screens, but uh, that should be fine. And then, um, yes, Bradley 
will therefore on distance be fourth whether he's classified or not's another matter uh, and then Ratcliffe and Donna Hudson and Morley Dalgleish in eighth ninth Clark and Much and uh, were second of the Woodcuteers and Hartogs and Helliwell third of the um, Hartogs and Helliwell next through in tenth McAlpine and Keane 11th and Hotchells in 12th. Third on the bottom step of the podium, please. Could we have uh, John Clark and Gordon Munch, please? Wherever they are. Gordon? John? Oh, they were second. You sure? We're just checking, guys. Just checking. No, they were third. They're second. Oh, sorry. Who's... They're second, they're third. Oh, who's third then? Potchell. Pardon? Paul Potchell and... Oh, George Paul Potchell and uh, George Potchell. Hey, you've got to swap over, guys. I'm sorry, I looked at the, I looked at the timing screen in a little bit. Too. So third place is uh, Paul and George. Many congratulations on a... Excellent. Typical, isn't it? When I, when I leave the uh, timing screen, it changes. Second place, I'm sorry I got that wrong, is Gordon Much and John Clark. My apologies. And uh, uh, the winners of the Woodcock Trophy is uh, Mike Grant Peterkin and Patrick Blakeney Edwards. If you'd like to step forward, guys, thank you very much. And uh, just to cap it, they're also third overall. Absolutely fabulous drive there from uh, Mike and Patrick. So there we go. There we got the uh, one, two, three. So uh, just before the next race starts, can we quickly vacate the uh, the podium, guys? Because we've now got to do the Sterling Moss trophies. Okay, we've just had confirmation that uh, Peter Ratcliffe is third. Yes, come on, Peter. A little bit different to your caterham. <laughs> well done, congratulations to Peter. Second place, Mark Cool. Congratulations, Mark. Second place there. And there, getting the truth from Duncan. Uh, and our winners are Rob Smith and Chris Ward. Congratulations, guys. A big hand there for our Sterling Moss Trophy winners. And uh, just before the next race start, let's have a take all the photos. There we go. And more photos. Look. Rob, Chris, would you like to well, just dip down here, please? There we go, we uh, spoke to Rob earlier in the event. Rob, well, you kind of predicted you were going to win it, but uh, it did take uh, the Lotus to break down, I think. I, I think he was going to have him anyway. I, I, I had full faith in Chris. Um, he hunted him down and, um, wow, what a last lap, as predicted. And um, the Lotus did a fantastic job and uh, I think a, a little bit unlucky. Um, but Chris kept the pressure on all race and um, brought it home for um, ADP and Morden Salt Racing. Yeah, magic. Come along here, uh, Chris. Yeah, Rob thinks you'd have got him. Yeah, you do too, don't you? For sure. I could see him uh, just <laughs> yeah. pushing himself and outbreaking himself on the corners ahead of me. Um, and uh, I knew I was uh, on for it. Uh, down the hangar straight, I think, is where it would have happened. Um, you were putting fastest laps in you know, the purple sectors. were coming up almost every lap. You were going quicker and quicker. Yeah, the track was drying out. There were still a few uh, damp patches. Uh, the final corner at Club was really sketchy, and there was a few patches everywhere. But the boys at ADP have done a fantastic job with the car. <coughs> Excuse me. And uh, thank you for Steve at Modern Salt Racing uh, for doing a great job uh, giving us the car to be able to to do this uh, absolutely fantastic looking car isn't it it's superb okay we'll have a quick word uh, where's mark cool is mark about mark is mark about we were speaking to mark earlier no so we'll have a quick word with peter ratcliffe third overall peter hello good to see you and uh, you know 
We've got history, haven't we? We have got history, <laughs> only about 20 years, isn't it? But yeah, my world of caterums is very different from this, all this slippy slidiness that these top guys, I mean, following people like Chris Ward and his partner there, it's just astonishing how good they are. So yeah, I was a bit of a struggle, to be fair, and uh, I was having some fantastic dicing, especially in the second half. No idea who with, but there was loads of dicing going on. I just absolutely loving it. It was fantastic, yeah. You had no idea where you were, did you? No, none whatsoever, no. I couldn't see my board. The guys at Team Leo has done a fantastic fantastic job getting the car tip top but I couldn't see the board so it didn't really matter just crack on and do what I can really yeah, well, congratulations we hope to see more of you thanks very much indeed I hope to be back thank you very much Peter